What's going down, Nerd Nation? It's your man, Pro Diggy. And in today's video, we're gonna be kind of going over the basics of vaping. So it's kind of a beginner's guide for those of you that maybe aren't really sure what vaping is or you kind of know, but there's a lot of information that you don't understand. So I'm gonna give like a basic 101 on vaping. So first thing is, what is vaping? Well, the actual definition of vaping is the act of inhaling and exhaling the water vapor produced by an electric device called a vaporizer or e-cigarette. Well, what does that even mean? Basically, a battery operated device sends an electric current to an atomizer or coil section of the vape, which in turn heats the coil to the point where the e-liquid or e-juice will boil and turn into a vapor that can be inhaled and then exhaled. So that's the definition of vaping. So the next question is why vape? Well, the majority of vapors are people that either smoke cigarettes or used to smoke cigarettes, like me. The main purpose of vaping is to be able to ingest the nicotine without having all the other harmful side effects of smoking. Now, vaping has actually been proven to be at least 95% better for your health than smoking traditional cigarettes. Also, there's no bad smell, no ashes, or accidentally burning a hole in your couch or your clothing like when you smoke cigarettes. But you don't have to be a smoker or an ex-smoker to vape. They have zero nicotine e-juice or e-liquid, so you can actually just vape for the flavor in the clouds if you like it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the parts or devices or equipment that is actually required to vape. So the first thing is, what is a mod? And regulated versus unregulated. But basically a mod is essentially the device that your atomizer connects to that houses the batteries. A regulated mod is much safer because it has a chip in it that allows you to control the power output of the device. It also has protection measures in place, for example, to make sure the atomizer is not shorting out or that the ohms aren't too low, which can put too much strain on the battery and then cause it to fail. An unregulated mod is a mod that does not have the ability to control the power outputs and outputs power based on the current voltage of the battery and the resistance or ohms of the coil that is in the atomizer. Now, unregulated mods are for much more advanced vapors and they're definitely not recommended for beginners. The next thing we're gonna talk about are types of atomizers. Now, an atomizer is essentially the thing that heats up to turn the e-liquid into vapor. Now, there's a few different types of atomizers. There's tanks, RTAs, which stands for Rebuildable Tank Atomizer, RDAs, which are Rebuildable Dripping Atomizers, and RDTAs, which are Rebuildable Dripping Tank Atomizers. So it's basically a cross between an RDA and an RTA. Now, tanks are generally not rebuildable. Sometimes they'll have what's called an RBA section, which is basically a coil that you can kind of take apart and rebuild. They're essentially made for pre-built coils that are manufactured by the same company for that particular tank. RTAs are a tank, but do not have the ability to install pre-made coils. And you have to coil it, wick it, and everything on your own. Now, RDAs are basically the same premise as an RT with the exception that there is no tank. You basically have to keep removing the cap, you put juice on the wicks, put the cap back on, and then you can vape. Now, a lot of them do have a very small juice well, but they don't hold very much liquid. RDTAs are basically a hybrid of RTAs and RDAs. RDA on the top with a very small tank on the bottom, which allows the flavor of an RDA, but being able to hold more liquid so you're not required to drip from the top all the time. Instead, the wicks go down into that little tank and they're saturated with liquid. Okay, so I'd actually like to show you a few different types of the atomizers that I was talking about. Now this right here, this is a tank. With a tank, it's got pre-built coils that are made by the manufacturer to fit that specific tank. This right here is the coil. I'm gonna go ahead and take the coil out for you so you can take a look at it. Here it is, it's encased in this stainless steel housing and it's already got the coils, the cotton, everything right there. So all you would do is you just screw it into the base section of the tank like so. Take your top section of your tank and you just screw it right on throw some juice in it. In this particular case, it's a top fill, so you just slide the cap over, you put your juice in that little kidney hole right there, and you're ready to vape. The next one is an RTA, basically like a tank, except for the fact that you have to build it yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the bottom section here, and as you can see, there are some coils in here 
you would then have to take your cotton, you put your cotton through the coils to wick it, put everything back together, put your juice in the top of the tank up here, at least on this particular tank. Some of them have different ways to put the juice in, but on this one, it's just two big kidney holes right there. You put your juice in, put your top cap back on, and you're ready to vape. Now the next atomizer, the RDA, the Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer. I'm gonna try and get this top cap off. This right here is the adjustable airflow control ring. Here is the barrel section. And then here is the build deck. So what you would do is you would install coils or in some cases coil, you would install one. But uh, in this case, this is a dual coil deck. So I would install two coils on here. I'd put my cotton in and wick it. As you can see, it doesn't have a tank or anything. So the juice basically is just on the wick, on the coil and a little bit down in this juice well. But eventually what you have to do is pull this top cap off, put some more juice down in there, put the top cap back on, vape, vape, vape. And then once you start to get low on juice, you'll have to pull the top cap off, put some juice in, etc. So you have to do that a bit more often than you do with tanks. Plus with tanks, you can actually see there's going to be liquid in here. You'll be able to see when it's getting low. Now the fourth one, unfortunately do not have an RDTA, but essentially it's the same thing as what you saw here on the RDA, except for the fact that there'll be a clear glass tank on the bottom of it. And the wicks will actually go down into that to be able to pick up the juice and go to the wick. Now, since I don't have one, I'll just put a picture up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And those are the different types of atomizers. Which brings me to the next section, which is coils. Now there's pre-built coils, and then there's building your own coils. Pre-built coils are coils that are completely built, ready to go. They have the coil, the wick is all enclosed in a stainless steel housing that you just kind of screw into a tank, throw some juice on there, put your tank together, and you're ready to vape. Now building your own coils requires more knowledge and practice. Essentially you would make, or you could even buy a pre-made coil. You install it into your RTA, your RDA, or your RDTA, but then you have to wick the coil with cotton or the medium of your choosing, then you put the juice on it, put everything together and then vape it. So now let's talk about e-juice or e-liquid. They're exactly the same thing, just with different names. E-liquid, it's a mixture of up to four main ingredients. It will consist of PG, which is propylene glycol, VG, which is vegetable glycerin, nicotine, if you choose to have nicotine, they do have zero nicotine e-liquids, and a flavoring. Some liquid is 100% PG, others are 100% VG, or sometimes there are different ratios of both, such as 70 VG, 30 PG, which is a very common ratio. Now, propylene glycol is an organic compound that is mainly used as a flavor carrier as the flavors used in e-liquid bind better to PG rather than VG. PG is found in antifreeze, which make people think that, oh, it must be bad. Water is also found in antifreeze and water's clearly not bad. Well, PG isn't bad either, and it's actually a common ingredient in asthma inhalers. <laughs> Now, vegetable glycerin is another organic compound that's actually used in food products and has a naturally sweet taste to it. The flavorings are food grade flavors and are deemed safe to ingest by the FDA. Nicotine in e-liquid is almost 100% pure and is extracted from tobacco leaves in an FDA approved laboratory. An e-liquid or an e-juice is just a blend of up to those four things. Sometimes, it's 100% PG with some flavoring and some nicotine or without nicotine. Sometimes it's all VG with some flavoring and some nicotine or without nicotine. Or again, sometimes it's a blend of all three or four. So now I kind of want to get into the, uh, the last portion of this, which is the benefits of vaping. Now there's major health benefits to vaping instead of smoking cigarettes. Obviously, a recent study showed that vaping is at least 95% safer than smoking traditional cigarettes. You can breathe deeper and easier. You won't run out of breath as fast. Your risk of heart attack actually decreases by 50% and you'll be obviously much less likely to get lung cancer. Now, aside from the health benefits, there's also other benefits to quitting smoking and switching to vaping. You and the things around you and your clothes won't smell gross. Your sense of taste and smell are far more powerful when you're not a smoker. You don't have embers that can fall off and burn you or burn your clothes or your furniture. Vaping is simply a much better alternative to smoking for a ton of reasons. It would be best to not smoke nor vape, but if you have to pick one, and vaping is clearly the better choice. So this has just kind of been, like I said, a very basic rundown of what vaping is for those of you that aren't really sure. Before I started vaping, someone asked me if I wanted some juice, like if I vaped, and I immediately assumed associated vaping with like some kind of like way of smoking weed, which there's a lot of people that actually think that that's what vaping is. There are ways to vape THC, but that's 
not what I do. And the majority of vapors don't generally vape THC. That's a totally different thing. When you think of vaping, don't automatically associate it with THC or marijuana because that's not the case. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully it was educational and informational to you. If you liked the video, well then like the video. If you enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to catch my last video also on the screen. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Don't forget until next time, coil it, wick it, juice it, and vape it. I'm out.